got to get right in order for everything else to flow. I worry a lot that uh, they're using the current set of economic difficulties to try to justify a massive expansion in the, in the government and uh, much more authority for the government over the private sector, and I don't think that's good. I don't think well, that's well, let's, let's going to solve the problem. That you learn a lot about an administration, especially a new administration, when it puts forward its first budget. $3.6 trillion. It's a lot of money. And as you know, it would redirect a lot of the government's priorities. Essentially, President Obama has said almost every day what he has said is a repudiation of many of the priorities you have. When you look at that budget, $3.6 trillion, redirecting the government resources in health care, in energy, in the environment. Also, a pretty large $1.75 billion deficit the first year out. Do you think that is consistent with what he promised in the campaign, or do you think he's overreaching his mandate? Well, I didn't like what he promised in the campaign. I frankly disagreed with it. Uh, and obviously, they won the election. He's the President of the United States. He gets to put forward the program he wants, but uh, those of us who are of the other political faith obviously get to comment on it and, uh, and try to improve on it and suggest alternatives. And frankly, I think the programs that he's recommended and pursuing in health care, in energy, and so forth, uh, constitute um, probably the biggest or one of the biggest expansions of federal authority over the private economy in the history of the Republic. And my own belief is that the way we grow the economy, create jobs, create wealth is in the private sector. Government doesn't do that. If you're really seriously interested in improving the performance of the economy, I think tax policy is more important. But I worry very much that what is being done here is saying we've got an economic crisis, therefore we're justified in fundamentally remaking the health program in America. I don't think that's right. Well, you mentioned your party and you mentioned proposing alternatives. There's a debate in your party about whether to put forward specific alternatives or whether, as the minority leader in the House, John Boehner, said, look, we don't have the votes, so let's just fight what we don't like, but we don't have a responsibility to lay out an alternative approach. Approach. Would you urge your party to be as specific as possible on every one of these issues and go to the American people and say, if we were in charge, here's what we would do differently, or should they just fight? Well, I think it's important over time to develop those uh, alternatives. I think it's uh, very important to let the public know what principles you're going to govern by if you're elected. Uh, I understand why they might not have a comprehensive program at this stage. It's only been a few weeks since uh, the uh, transition. And uh, so it'll take them a while to get their act together. But there's nothing inappropriate or wrong with the Republicans in the Congress saying uh, to the American people what it is they like and don't like, what they agree with or disagree with in the Obama platform. As you know, there's a debate in this town about whether the president is trying to do too much too fast. This is the Sunday Ledger Inquirer in Columbus, Georgia. And a night Ritter story here about is Obama trying to do too much too fast. You have a unique perspective. You have been the White House Chief of Staff. You served in the Congress in the minority party. You were in the cabinet in the first Bush administration and then vice president for eight years. Mm -hmm. I know you don't like a lot of what he's trying to do, but if young Richard Cheney was in the Chief of Staff's office down the hall from President Obama, not Rahm Emanuel, would you be saying, Mr. President, you're trying to do too much too fast or given that he wants to do so many things and that at the moment he's quite popular, would you say, you know what, it's a little risky, but let's go? Well, that's... Uh so it's somewhat analogous to the situation we had. We came in after the probably the closest election in history, a five-week recount of the Florida vote. And uh, we got a lot of advice at the time that we should change our program because the, the election had been so close. Um, President, rightfully, I thought, rejected that and said, look, this is what I ran on. We're going to uh, improve our military capabilities. We're going to cut taxes. We're going to do no child left behind. And we did it. We did not allow the uh, critics to uh, diminish what we were trying to accomplish. So from the standpoint of, of what uh, the Obama administration is trying to do, I can't argue that they should pace it or anything like that. I think that's, oh, those are all tactical calls they've got to make. What's much more important is the substance of what they recommend, and, and that's what I disagree with. Right, you disagree with it. I want to show you one more newspaper headline in this segment. This is a newspaper many Americans might not recognize, but I read it, and I know you read it. Human it's events. the conservative weekly Human Events. And in the lead article this week, they call it Obama's brazen deception to sell agenda. Essentially the point you just made, that they have under the umbrella of an economic crisis. You must support us. There's this urgency to act now that they are putting in this newspaper view a lot of items like health care like the environment other priorities and saying we have to do this all now is the president of the united states trying to brazenly deceive the american people well i think uh, they've taken liberties if you will with the arguments um given the importance to the to the country and to all of us of having a healthy economy and getting the economy back on track it seems to me an administration does have an obligation to set priorities and go after that first. Uh, it also uh, occurs to me that one of the 
tools that's most important in doing that is tax policy and uh, cutting taxes, especially for those who invest and create wealth and create jobs. Uh, that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing an argument made that we've got economic difficulties, therefore we're going to have a cap and trade program with respect to carbon emissions. That's a huge energy tax that's going to be applied across across the society. Or that we're going to fundamentally change the health care system. We haven't had a debate on the health care system, uh, well, since 93. Perfectly fine to have a debate on it, but we're not having a debate on it. I was concerned when the first stimulus program wasn't put together in the administration, but rather was something that just sort of chucked up on Capitol Hill and let the Congress write that legislation, which says to me there really isn't a coherent uh, approach at this point to trying to improve the economy. Uh, there are people, I assume, watching this interview right now and people in this town who would say, why should we listen to you? And they would say that because of the context of the Bush administration numbers. They would say, you know, what did you do when you were in charge? And they have some numbers that back up their case, and I want to show some to our viewers. When you came to office, the unemployment rate in the country was 4.2 percent. When you left, it was 7.6 percent. The number of Americans in poverty when you arrived, just under 33 million, over 37 million when you left. The number without health insurance, a little over 41 million when you came over 45 million, approaching 46 million when you left. And you came with a budget surplus of $128 billion. And in the final year, the budget deficit was a record $1.3 trillion. So what would you say to someone out there watching this who's saying, why should they listen to you? Well, there are all kinds of arguments to be made on that point. But there, there's something that's more important than the specific numbers you're talking about. And that had to be a priority for our administration. Eight months after we arrived, we had 9-11. We had 3,000 Americans killed one morning by Al-Qaeda terrorists here in the United States. We immediately had to go into the wartime mold. We uh, ended up with two wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, some of that's still very active. We had major problems uh, with respect to things like Katrina, for example. All of these things required us to spend money that we had not originally planned to spend or were, weren't originally part of the budget. Uh, stuff happens, and the uh, administration has to be able to respond to that, and we did. I think it's uh, also, you talk but you about were, the But you were a conservative members. administration, spending right. up more than but $1 trillion. Always dollars. Said, I always said that, um, that the wartime scenario um, is cause for an exception in terms of spending. It was uh, appropriate in World War II, certainly, and I think it's appropriate now. All right, we'll continue our conversation in just a minute. When we come back, President Obama has made some significant changes to the way the United States fights the war on terror. Will those changes put the country in more danger? We'll ask former Vice President Dick Cheney when our exclusive interview continues in just a moment. Stay with us. State of the Union with John King. Brought to you by the people of America's oil and...